Jenny and the New Girl by Catherine Woolley, Chapter 2 Marcia Barbara went home on Sunday evening. Jenny and her father took her to the bus. I've had a wonderful time, Barbara said as they waited in the dusk in front of the little bus station. It was just like last summer, being with the gang again. And look, Jenny, you and Anna and Geneva have got to come and visit me for a weekend. Now, I'll write you real soon. Oh, that would be fun. Jenny gave a joyful little hop. A weekend in New York was really something to look forward to. We four had the best time, don't we? She exclaimed. Daddy carried Barbara's bag aboard when the big brown bus swooped up to the curb. Jenny stood waving. As the bus pulled out, she felt quite impressed with Barbara, setting off alone in the dark, even though New York was only an hour away, and her mother would be at the terminal. I wouldn't like to go alone, Jenny thought, a small, uh, with a small shiver. I'd be scared. But of course, she thought, if Geneva and Anna and she went to visit, visit Barb, nobody would have to go alone. Go along. She wouldn't be scared if Geneva was with her, for Geneva was not afraid of anything and always led the way. That was one of the reasons she was no, so nice for a best friend. Jenny overslept on Monday morning. She was late getting start, starting for school, but she went around by Geneva's house anyway. She could hardly wait to talk about Barbara's visit and the party and everything. She wanted to tell Geneva, too, that Barbara, what Barbara had said about inviting them for a weekend visit. Jenny gave a skip, skip of excitement. She and Geneva had so many things to talk about. She poised in the curb for a moment, looking both ways before she crossed the street. Planning things with Geneva and talking them over afterwards was almost ha as much as fun as doing them, she thought happily. She remembered what Barbara had said the other night about after they were in bed. You and Geneva are awfully good friends, aren't you? Yes, Jenny answer had answered. She's my best friend. Who's yours? Barbara had thought about it. I don't think I have one. I like lots of girls at the school. Well, so do I. We play with other kids, too, but Geneva and I are best friends, Jenny had repeated with satisfaction. Som sometimes she's over here so much, or I'm over there so much. Mrs. Porter calls us the twins. It was a nice, safe, comfortable feeling, having a best friend, especially since most of the other girls had their own best friends, too. If you didn't have one, you'd feel left out. But when you had a best friend, you, had, you never had to do things alone. Jenny skipped up to the walk to Geneva's front door. Mrs. Porter answered her ring. Oh, Jenny, she said. Geneva's gone, dear. Marcia called for her. Oh, Jenny felt let down. She went on alone, feeling some of the high spirits go out of her like air from a balloon. Well, she would see Geneva at recess anyway. She grew cheerful again at the prospect of reliving Barbara's visit. Maybe I'll ask Marcia over this afternoon, she thought, a warm impulse of generosity toward the new girl kindling within her. And Geneva, too, of course. But when the class emerged from the building for recess, Marcia captured Geneva before Jenny got to her. Marcia, in fact, was gathering all the girls around her. What's she showing everybody? Jenny asked Marjorie at, on the edge of the circle. A new pearl ring, Marjorie said. It's pretty. Marcia's uncle sent it to her. Jenny pressed forward to see the ring. It was a pretty ring, as Marja had said. And Jenny felt a twinge of envy. Marjorie, Marcia held out her hand so everyone could admire it. It was very expensive, she was saying, and suddenly Jenny turned away, a prickle of distaste running through her. I don't believe I feel like asking her over this afternoon after all, she thought. She wished she could get Geneva out of that out of that crowd. She wanted so much to talk about everything, but Geneva seemed so seemed as impressed as the other girls. When the group did break up, Jenny started to say Geneva but before the word was out of her mouth, Marcia seized Geneva's arm and pulled her to the si to one side. I want to tell you something. She announced. Deliberately, she turned her back on Jenny and whispered in Geneva's ear. Jenny could scarcely believe her eyes. Could any girl be as rude as that? She hesitated, then turned away, too shocked even to be curious about what Marcia's secret might be. When school let out at lunchtime, Jenny tried to again. Coming? she asked Geneva. Sure, Geneva said. Let's wait for Marcia. Impatience with Geneva rose in Jenny. She waited and walked along with the other two. But she had little to say. She certainly did not want to discuss the week it ended with Marcia along. There was small chance anyway, for Marcia was describing it in detail in movies she had seen. Gee, Geneva said, that must have been super. Do you want to say, do you want to go to a show with me next Saturday? Marcia asked eagerly. My mother will let me treat ice cream after afterwards. Okay, Geneva sounded pleased. Marcia did not include Jenny. That's because I didn't ask her to my party, Jenny silently acknowledged. 
But at the close of school that afternoon, seeing Marcia slip her arm through Geneva's, Jenny turned away. All of a sudden, she felt like an outsider. Geneva and I always go home together, she thought, really annoyed. What does Marcia think she's doing? Jenny walked home with Anna. When she went upstairs, she found Mother standing on the small red stepladder in Jenny's bedroom, which Daddy had just redecorated. The woodwork was pale pink. Now, the walls covered with flowered paper. The dressing table wore a ruffled skirt, and Mother had just finished hanging the new organdy curtains. Hello, darling. Mother gathered the curtains evenly on the rods. There, she got down and stood back to survey her work. Don't they look beautiful? Yes, Jenny tried to sound as pleased as her mother. The crisp, snowy curtains did look nice, but they didn't take away that disturbed, unhappy feeling inside her. Mother turned toward her. the newly painted bookshelves. Jenny, some of those baby books will have to go inside the attic, I think. You just haven't room. Do you want to go over them and see which to pack away? Feeling a bit lost without Geneva's company for the afternoon, Jenny welcomed the suggestion. Wait till I get something to eat. She slipped out of her coat and pulled her school books, piled her school books on the table. What fun it was, looking over all her old books. Jenny sat cross-legged before the shelves, a crisp red apple in one hand, head bent over the first one, then another slim volume until they were piled all around her. Oh, me, she thought finally, closing another book, with a happy sigh. She bit into her apple and lay back contentedly on the floor, stretching her cramped, cramped legs and munching. I hate to put any of these books in the attic, she thought. I'll never get tired of them any more than I will of my teddy bear. She sat up again and reached for the brown bear propped on the top shelf. She had no he had no arms or legs, and one eye was missing as well as considerable fur. But Jenny hugged him tight, then looked into his one gleaming shoe button eye and kissed him heartily on the nose. She put him back. Guess I'll call Geneva, she thought. The friendly old books had made her feel much better. That business about Marcia didn't seem nearly as real or important, but Geneva was not at home. She's over at Marcia's, dear, Mrs. Porter said. Shall I have her call you when she comes in? No, thanks. Never mind. <clears throat> Jenny hung up slowly. The upset feeling was back. Worse than ever. She had not forsaken Geneva and Marcia's friendship. She had not taken Geneva and Marcia's friendship seriously. She had just been annoyed. Now she sat at the telephone, really disturbed rather than angry. Were they going to, to, to walk to, to and from school together every day and play every afternoon? Jenny looked around forlornly. She did not feel like reading any more, and she did not think she could put her mind to on homework. What could she do? Mother sat knitting. Jenny walked, watched the needles fly. Their smooth click intrigued her and in spite of herself. Is it hard to knit? She inquired. Not very. Jenny considered. Will you show me how? Mother nodded. We can get some wool if you like. You can, you can uh, start a scarf. Jenny felt her inside stir. I could make a scarf for Daddy for Christmas. Let's get the wool tomorrow. That would be lovely, Jenny, Mother said. But time hung heavy on Jenny's hands this minute, she, and she sighed. What can I do now? Mother stopped knitting and said, and surveyed her work, head on one side. Well, she said, I'm going to put this away and make an apple pie. Can I make it? Jenny asked. Mother glanced at her as if curious at the sudden domestic interest. Jenny had always been too busy playing to take time for homemaking. That, she had taken for granted, was strictly Mother's department. I'd be delighted to have you make the pie, Mother said. Oh, good, Jenny cheered up at the prospect of a busy ending to her solitary afternoon. Wash your hands first, Mother instructed, then I'll show you what to do. Jenny put the shortening and flour together as a, as a Mother showed her, mixing the chunks of shortening so hard and slippery and cold between her fingers, with the velvet smooth for flour was fun. Her mother set down a cup of water. When you have that thoroughly mixed, add a few drops of water, just enough to hold the dough together. Jenny added the water. But but now the dough stuck to her fingers in a hopeless mess. Oh, too much, mother said. You'll have to add some more flour. More flour made the dough fall apart. More water made it stick to Jenny and the rolling pin. She put down the rolling pin to try and pry it off her fingers. Here, Mother said, you're doing fine, but let me get it into shape. Jenny watched with admiration as her mother quickly patted and rolled and coaxed the round of dough, and then put it into a pie pan. There, Mother said, you mixed it. All I did was roll it out. She sliced the apples, sugar, and sprinkled with cinnamon, were tucked plumply at, plump, 
softly out of sight under the top crest. Jenny enjoyed pinching the two crusts together at the edges under her mother's direction. Your very first pie, mother said, smiling at Jenny as the oven door closed. At dinner, Jenny felt a warm glow of achievement when mother and daddy said the pie was simply delicious. It did seem to her this was the best pie she had ever tasted, and she could hardly believe that she had made it herself. May I have another piece? she asked, passing her plate. I think I'll learn to cook everything there is. She went off to school happily the next day, eager once more to see Geneva and tell her what she could cook. That she could cook. Today, Marcia had a new dress on, rose-colored silk, trimmed with lace, that engaged the girls' attention at recess. That's a crazy dress to wear to school, Jenny thought, privately turning up her nose. Barb would never wear a dress like that. I wouldn't either, or Geneva. I don't like this Marcia. But at noon, Marcia was on hand again to walk home with Geneva. This time, Jenny decided stubbornly to march along, right along with them. Geneva chattered on, apparently unaware of Jenny's coldness. Marcia was talking about her pearl ring again. My uncle who gave it to me is rich. Jenny was so stiff with dislike, she could scarcely raise her eyes from the pavement. By three o'clock, she was determined to get Geneva away from Marcia's annoying presence. Geneva, she said, falling in closely beside her as they left the building. Come on, come on over to my house. I've got lots of things to tell you. Okay, Geneva sounded cheerfully willing, and Jenny's heart leapt with relief. Gosh, Geneva said, I've hardly seen you since Barb was here. Marcia always wants me to... Just then, something between a groan and a shriek sounded behind them. Jenny turned to see Marcia coming toward them. Limping. Oh, Geneva, Marcia, Marcia moaned. I turned my ankle. Oh, I think I sprained it just now. Will you help me? Will you please help me home? Jenny stood stiffly. She isn't hurt, she was saying to herself. She's just doing that to get Geneva to go with her. Come on, Jenny, Geneva was saying. You get on, you get on one side. If she's hurt, she ought to see the nurse, Jenny said. No, Marcia moaned, groaned, clutching Geneva's arm. I have to get home. Please, Geneva. Jenny hesitated another second. I'm sorry, but I have to get home, too, she said, and turned on her heel, leaving Geneva to help the limping Marcia. I know she didn't really hurt her ankle, Jenny fumed to herself. She'll do anything to get Geneva to play with her. Well, she doesn't fool me, even if she does fool Geneva. She went home, feeling all stirred up. In the kitchen, she spread a piece of bread with strawberry jam and took an angry little bite, gazing out the window at but thinking of Marcia and what she could do about her. Peter came out of the back door, out of his back door, carrying a basket and some string. Jenny watched as she ate. She climbed on to, into the crotch of the apple. He climbed into the crotch of the apple tree in his yard, where a board had been nailed in place for a seat. Jenny decided she wanted company. She fin finished her her sandwich hastily rinsed the stickiness from her hands and ran out to join him. Hi, she called, looking up. Peter gazed down through his glasses. Hi. Can I come up? Jenny asked. Oh, no, I can't. She remembered she had not changed her school dress. Wait here. I'll go get my dungarees on. She was back in five minutes. Peter had let up the basket down on the string. You can send stuff up to me, he said. What kind of stuff? Oh, supplies and miss and missiles, in case of an enemy. Okay. Jenny looked around and found some stones. She loaded the basket, and Peter hauled it up to his tree roost while she watched. Ask my mother to give you some cookies and to send some and to send up. He suggested. Jenny brought out a supply of cookies and two bananas. Peter raised the basket and peeled a banana. Cheeks bulging, he took time out to eat. The banana looked good. I'm coming up. Jenny announced. She found a toehold on the gnarled trunk and hoisted herself, her foot, set her foot on a branch and scrambled up. Move over. How come you aren't playing with Geneva today? Peter inquired, wiping his mouth with his sleeve. Oh, she wriggled, settling herself more comfortably and reached for the second banana. She's playing with Marcia, dopey. What do you mean, dopey? I don't see why she wants to go around with Marcia. Marcia's always showing off her new clothes or pretending she sprained her ankle. Or something, so Geneva will play with her. Peter edged over and leaned to adjust the string on his supply basket. Maybe Geneva likes her. I bet she doesn't. Geneva watched the basket descend, but she was not thinking about it. Marcia just kept. Marcia just keeps calling for her and sticking around and getting Geneva to go to, to her house. Geneva's my best friend. She isn't hers. It was a relief to speak her mind for, to someone. 
Even if she is your best friend, she can play with other kids, can't she? No, Jenny said stubbornly. I mean, we do both play with other kids, but Marcia wants, just wants Geneva all to herself. Peter dangled the basket to the ground. Girls are crazy, he had pronounced. Something told Ginny to change the subject if she wanted to keep Peter's approval. She was silent for a few minutes, casting about, casting about for a more truthful topic of conversation. What do you think is going to win the contest? Who do you think is going to win the contest, she asked. Their class was having a competition. If the girls got a higher arithmetic average for the month, the boys would have to give them a Halloween party. If the girls would provide the party if the boys won. Probably the girls, Peter hauled up his basket and cheerfully helped himself to a cookie. They sat companionably, discussing school, till Jenny heard Mother calling. She remembered that she had heard she had told Mother she would like to help get dinner. I've got to go, she twisted around, reached for a plate, uh, to put her foot, place to put her foot, and slid to the ground. I asked my mother if she'd teach me how to cook, and she's going to let me get dinner. Bye, she called, brushing her hands on her dungarees and starting for home. Peter is a nice boy, Jenny thought, skipping across the yard. She had really forgotten how nice because she had not been playing with him very much lately. That was partly because she and Geneva were always together, and partly because now they were so grown up that the girls did not even speak to the boys half the time when they met on the street. But there he was, right next door, and seemed perfectly agreeable to accepting her as a playmate. If Geneva insisted on playing with, Ma with that Marcia, well, Jenny thought, anyhow, I can play with Peter. She felt quite lighthearted again as she ran up her back steps in the dusk and into the lighted kitchen.